Hello again everybody and welcome back for my fourth and final video for my series in Palm Springs, California where I'll be talking about the historic tennis club in the first half and then South Palm Springs in the second. Starting with the historic tennis club, this is one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city with a mixture of homes, condos, and hotels that are all within walking distance to downtown and Palm Canyon Drive. There's also the O'Donnell Golf Course that was built in 1926, opened to the public in 1932, and is today the oldest golf course in the entire Greater Palm Springs area. So my favorite hotel that gave me an unforgettable impression was the Caracchia Pension, which is half Moroccan on one side and half Mediterranean on the other. Starting with the Moroccan side, you can definitely feel the culture right away when checking into the lobby where they also offer their welcome drink called the Moroccan Mint Tea. There are also two Moroccan fountains with the smaller one being in front of the lobby and the bigger one in front of the pool area. Everything is lit up in the evening ranging from lit candles, multiple fireplaces, and some pretty lanterns near the main entrance. There's also a stone waterfall with some seating areas that I found pretty awesome. Then across the street is the Mediterranean side which features a good sized massage hut. There's movie night every night at the pool area which is also very well lit up, has plenty of sun lounging chairs, and behind there is another fire pit area. This was the side where I happened to stay, which was in the Mykonos suite. When I first walked in, I couldn't believe how beautiful and nice everything was. It also included a great kitchen area, a small patio in the back with some furniture, and I found the bathroom pretty awesome because it had a bathtub made of stone. So another historic hotel that I also enjoyed staying at was the Ingleside Estate. It was originally built as a family home in the 1920s, the property is full of Spanish Revival architecture and you can also feel the history in the lobby which also has some good history photos on the wall. Behind the lobby is a courtyard with a nice looking fountain and in front of the lobby is the pool area with lots of green space that includes a fire pit and some tables. Next to the lobby is a restaurant known as Melvin's which is named after Melvin Haber who was once the hotel owner from 1975. As for the hotel, there's a combination of 30 guest rooms and suites. The one I stayed in had lots of room and was very clean. It included a few nice chairs with a TV, a good sized fireplace, and an outside private patio. Across the street is their sister hotel known as the Avalon Bungalows and Suites, which also goes back to the 1920s and currently has a total of 70 different rooms and suites. I unfortunately don't have any rooms to show you, but I can show you the different areas and their three different pools. The first one is right in front of the restaurant where I was able to have breakfast. The other pool is a short walk away and near a large area of suites. Behind there is the Estrella Spa, which I'm not able to show you either, but I can show you the big jacuzzi that's right next to it. The third pool is all the way on the other end and is a bit more secluded with a few cabanas. It's also near the Presidio area, which holds special events and occasions, as well as being nearby to more suites. The next hotel that I want to talk about for this area is the Tennis Club, which is all the way in the back of the neighborhood and at the base of the mountains. This is the hotel where the neighborhood gets its name from. The hotel building was completed in 1972, but the property goes back to the year 1937 when it started as a tennis club. The lobby was very big with furniture, had historical pictures on the wall, and also goes upstairs where you can take a better look at their chandelier. I was very impressed when I first checked into my room that also included both a good sized living room with a kitchen area and an outdoor patio in the front. The hotel also has multiple pools with many tennis courts scattered all over the place. There's also a restaurant called Spencer's which has a nice atmosphere and also gave me a good first impression. 
I suggest to dine in the evening when it's more beautiful with all the lights. On that note, I really enjoyed the chicken breast with a side of mashed potatoes and green beans. For breakfast, I suggest ordering both the banana stuffed French toast and the oatmeal with nuts and berries. Next to the restaurant is an oval shaped pool and then above is the upper lawn area where weddings and other special events take place. So before talking about South Palm Springs, I do want to briefly mention two hiking trails in the area, with the North Lycan Trail being the first and the Museum Trail being the second. Boat trails start off going uphill, offer very little to no shade, and I strongly advise to come prepared with a backpack full of snacks and water. As for the Museum Trail, it starts right next to the Art Museum, offers partial views of the O'Donnell Golf Course, and is roughly a mile and a half round trip. The North Lycan Trail starts on Ramon Road and offers more of a challenge being roughly three miles round trip. I hiked a good part of it, but I unfortunately didn't go all the way. However, I was able to come across an area that offered panoramic views of Palm Springs and the nearby areas, and that was enough to make me turn back. So South Palm Springs is roughly a five to 10 minute drive from downtown. In this part of town, you'll find a lot more apartment and condo buildings, as well as shopping centers. There's also some of the city's most popular restaurants and hotels, as well as more hiking trails. Before talking about the hotels and restaurants, I do want to mention two more hiking trails in the area, with the first being the Andreas Canyon Trail, and the second being the trail in Takwitz Canyon. Starting with the Andreas Canyon Trail, it's in an area known as Indian Canyons which are on Native American land and requires a small emission fee to enter. The area features multiple hiking trails, but the Andreas Canyon is the only one I'm going to be talking about. It's just a mile loop that features a creek with plenty of palm trees. Just roughly at the halfway point, you'll be able to get some good views and photo opportunities. The trail does start at the parking lot, but one thing you must notice when you're there is both the grinding mortar and the information board right next to it. Overall, it's a very simple hike, but I still suggest you come prepare with snacks and water. As for the hiking trail in Takwitz Canyon, it was home to the local Native American tribe known as the Kuwia people for thousands of years. The trail was still an easy hike, but it's a bit more advanced from having a few uphills and being just under two miles round trip. There's an information center at the start where you pay a small entrance fee to get in, but I promise you it's worth it when you reach the 60-foot waterfall and swimming area at the very end. I also liked coming back down because it was very scenic looking at all the windmills and the city from a different point of view. On a final note, this is another hike where I strongly recommend to bring a backpack full of snacks and water. An attraction that I want to recommend that has a mixture of history and nature is the Morton Botanical Garden. The attraction has been owned by the Morton family since 1938 and their residence in the back is known as the Cactus Castle. The garden has around 3,000 different kinds of desert plants and cacti from many parts of the world. Be sure to also notice the adobe wall which was originally part of the first Palm Springs Hotel that was torn down in 1957. It's a very small cover charge to get in and my estimated time I suggest spending here is between 30 to 45 minutes. The first restaurant that I would like to talk about in South Palm Springs is Elmer's which is very popular and has many great reviews. I really liked how they had their walls decorated with history photos and you'll find a small article by the Palm Springs Life magazine. The restaurant is open all day but is the busiest during breakfast. On that note, they are the most popular for their German pancakes. I was able to get the fresh fruit type with a combination of eggs and bacon. If you decide to come for lunch, I highly suggest their prime rib dip. 
Another restaurant that I want to talk about next that opens up in the evening is Bar Cecil, which has only been around for a few years. I was really impressed with the creative atmosphere with the colorful chairs, different style lamps, the pictures on the wall, and of course with how pretty it all looked when I came at night. Their deviled eggs are one of their best selling appetizers. I really enjoyed their steak and fries for the main entree and then their Aniston's pavlova for dessert. A new dish they plan on putting on their menu is escargot, which they gave me the option of trying out. Another restaurant I enjoyed that's open from breakfast to dinner was Gigi's Bar and Grill. The interior was also full of style with the different designs and colors. If you come for breakfast, I suggest ordering their egg and bacon sandwich where I added avocado. I came back another evening for dinner to experience their outdoor patio lit up. Their most popular item on their dinner menu is the Gigi's truffle pasta, which I found very delicious. For a grab and go kind of place, I want to suggest Gabino's crepes that's even been featured on the Food Network. Their menu had at least seven different crepes, but their most popular is the chicken pesto, which I really enjoyed having. Next door is an ice cream shop called Cream, where you can get an ice cream flight in an egg carton, and they also have affogados. Then one coffee place I want to talk about is the coffee location for South Palm Springs. There's lots of fresh and good sized pastries to choose from. This location also had a good seating area facing the mountains. And once again, I never get tired of having their blackberry peach yogurt parfait. The first hotel I would like to talk about in South Palm Springs is a very popular pool party hotel known as the Saguaro. This is the hotel where you'll find many people celebrating special occasions such as bachelorettes, birthdays, or just having a good weekend trip. The pool area features multiple luxury cabanas with TVs, a nice bar with a DJ playing right next to it. I also like the yellow umbrellas and sun lounging chairs that went well with all the different colors on the buildings. All the rooms come with balconies and the one I had gave me partial views of the pool party and a place I enjoyed relaxing at sunset. I was able to get a king size bedroom that had lots of space. However, my only negative review was the room and the hotel could have been cleaner. So if cleanliness is a priority, then I would suggest other hotels. On a more positive note, I did enjoy their Mexican restaurant called El Jefe Cantina that features both indoor and outdoor dining. If you dine indoors, be sure to notice the history photos that are hung on the wall. As for food, I recommend both the nachos with black beans and pico de gallo, and also their shrimp tacos made with Spanish chorizo. Another hotel that I want to talk about that has lots of tikis and is Polynesian themed is the Caliente Tropics. The hotel first opened in the year 1964. The pool area is of decent size with tikis and flowers. Behind there is a good sized jacuzzi and then behind both is a huge grass area with plenty of cabanas. The hotel also has a few restaurants on site with the first one being right next to the pool which is called The Reef and is also full of tikis. It offers both indoor and outdoor seating as well as another good place for nightlife. I really enjoyed having one of their burgers made with blue cheese. There is also the Mexican restaurant called Sancho's that has a nice combination of tikis and sombreros. For breakfast, I suggest their breakfast burrito and then for lunch, I suggest their cheese enchiladas. Then connected to there is a bar called La Fern which has a different kind of atmosphere and is decorated pretty nicely. As for the rooms, I booked the Deluxe King. My reviews for cleanliness and property conditions with both the room and the hotel are average. Overall, on a positive note, the staff was very friendly. It's within walking distance to many of the nearby restaurants and coffee shops and only a mile away to all of downtown's attractions. After South Palm Springs comes the city of Cathedral City and many other cities and attractions you can do within Greater Palm Springs. This does conclude my series for Palm Springs, California. I would like to thank you all for watching and stay tuned for another series I have planned in the very near future.